All right, we have hit uh, week seven of the 16-week semester, and we want to start preparing for our midterm, which is going to come up in week nine. On the Monday of week nine, on October 23rd, you're going to give your presentations. So I want to introduce your group presentations to you now, so you have a couple weeks, maybe one week to, to come up with your theme with your group members and another week to, to work on it and put the content in. Then on the Wednesday of that week, on October 25th, we'll actually have our exam, and you'll have your, your class midterm critique, which is when you have to print uh, three of your pieces from the first half of class, map them, put them up in the room for a full class critique. And that's going to be one of our proving grounds. So if you go back to today, in week seven, uh, we're working on our animation assignment. We're going to turn that in next class. And then we're going to start on a logo. And then we're going to turn that logo in let's see, on the 23rd, which is also when we're going to start printing for our full midterm gallery critique on the 25th. So lots going on. We're pretty busy around our midterm. So to look at group presentations, we're going to go to unit modules. And even though we're still working on unit 7, we're going to look ahead to unit 8 for everything you need to know about the group presentation. So here are some slides from a past group example. We're going to work with your, you're going to work with your group members. You want to choose a unique presentation topic. So no one in the class, no group can, can present on the same thing. So that's why we need to kind of talk about it, kind of claim our topics. I'll show you where you can put them once, once you have one, or you've, even if you just want to suggest one to your group. We're going to do it in Google Slides. And you're going to add me with my Gmail address. Uh, as a participant in your Google Slides. I'll show you an easy way to do that. And then these are worth five points. So your group, anyone whose names are on the slide, that's your group. They will all get the same grade out of five on the presentation. But that means, it doesn't mean you all have to do the exact same things on the presentation. You have public speakers, you have responsible leaders, you have computer literate. Gesundheit. Um, so you get to decide where you best can help. You know, maybe one of you speaks through the presentation. Maybe one of you uh, writes the curatorial essay, and we'll talk about that. Maybe uh, one of you really helps organize and find all the, the images and puts them in a nice formatting in Google Slides. So, and obviously you're all going to put your input in onto what the theme is. So, point one, out of the five points, you get one point for having a Google Slides presentation. It should be no more, really, than around 15 images. So you could have as few as 10, and it would still work well. But 15 is really kind of the maximum. That's what you should be shooting for. Uh, you need to have I information with each image. Right? So that information should be. So this presentation is worth five points. This is a, a one-page assignment sheet you can download if you get nervous about it. And after you've done your slides, they need to have images in them. That's what you get one point for. The second point you get for giving the right information with each image, right? We don't want to just give an image and not credit it. If you remember what we learned about in terms of compositing and the rights and responsibilities you have when using other people's pixels, we're going to be using other people's images for this slide presentation because we're presenting disciplines of digital art that are happening outside of this class, right? And so we want to give them credit. You, you don't need a reference. That, that can be referenced there, not in a separate paper. Article. Yes, I don't need, because it's a presentation, not a paper, I don't need formal citations. I just need the information like it is in an art textbook, you know, underneath the image. Uh, the third thing is you're going to have a theme to your show because you're the curators, right? So if you pick a theme like, I want to do album cover art with my group. So we're going to look at digital art used for album covers, which are is the key art on Spotify and on Apple Music, right? But it's also printed on the CDs, if the CDs are printed anywhere. 
There might be as many LPs made of albums now as CDs, but all of that incorporates art. And so that's our theme. So we want to, to write just one slide. It's, it's basically the equivalent of one or two pages of text that tells us why you think that theme is important. You know, why album art is interesting as a digital art discipline and what kind of interesting things you find going on with it. Those are the three deliverables, right? So that are required of everyone. Images of art, no, around 15, really try not to do more than 15. Uh, information that goes with the art, and then an explanation, an argument for the theme of your show, why it matters to you, so that we can care and know why it matters. Now, the organization and clarity, that's a point you get for having everything clear and that the when it's presented in class it all makes sense it's not like new to the person who's speaking about it that they can kind of clearly say the names they know what names go with what artwork and they know what they, what they want to say about each artwork and basically what you say is why you decided to include it in your show right and then for point five this is where you can get creative you need to do something to get that fifth point that is uh, extra Right? It's not extra credit, it's just an extra to help us remember your topic. So this can be things like uh, animations, tutorials, uh, handouts. You can all wear kind of a t-shirt that matches your theme. If you were doing like video game character design as your theme, you might all wear like a video game theme t-shirt. These certain things will help you, like music that goes with your images, anything that engages us. So. In order to get the full five point, and you can get half points on all of these as well as a full point, uh, to not just get a half point for over and above, you have to use two modalities. So it's very fun and it's pretty user friendly and helpful to put a video into your slides. But if you have like three videos, you still only get half your extras point for it, right? And also you want to be careful how many videos you use because you want to use your 10 to 15 minutes, you know, responsibly. So the first tip is with your group, you want to pick a topic or theme that you find interesting, right? It needs to be worthwhile to you. This is your chance to do research into the outside world of digital art and see what people are doing. Because this presentation is on disciplines, not on individual artists, right? So you're gonna create a theme show of digital art that you find interesting, educational, and engaging. The theme can be based on subject matter that the group is interested in researching, like fantasy animals, retro graphics, futuristic technology, comic books, or on a specific digital, digital technique they would like to explore, vector renderings, 3D modeling, motion graphics. It goes on and on. And so it just goes, the presentation should include 10 to 15 images, should last between 10 and 15 minutes. You want to research the objects and the process by which they were made. Uh, give information with each image including the title of the piece, the name of the artist, the program materials used, and the, the dimensions, even if they're just pixel dimensions. If information is not available for all images, that's okay, but you need some information with every image. Right? If you cannot find the information, do not use that image. And you'll also have a curatorial essay as part of your slides that states your topic, your reasons for including your art objects, and what you've learned from researching the subject, basically why we should care. And each group is required to have a different theme. So let's look at some examples. You'll find these all in unit eight. Now these are the two themes I don't want you to choose because they've been overdone in the class. And I'm sharing them with you here. So 2D digital animation. We talked about differences in different types of animation when we introduced our assignment three. And then 3D modeling for video games. But you can do things that are around this and similar to this, but not directly these. That's because most of the time groups kind of choose these first off. All right, so you'll see in these past examples, they're explaining the difference between 2D digital animation and 3D digital animation in this presentation. And they're using a lot of examples. They're using examples from uh, various artists, from various countries. It's nice if it can be global. And they're using some extras. They have like GIF animations in here. They have process showing how animatics are made, which relates directly to what we're doing with our GIF animation 
today. Animatics are very much like our GIF animations. They're like quick previs work. They show how, how the 2D digital animation is cleaned up and drawn and colored all digitally. And then how in-betweens happen between keyframes. Yes, Xavier. You see, uh, you see uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, right? Mm-hmm. Th that's 2D digital, yeah. Okay, because it, 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 it gives you like a, like a, like a 3D feel. Yeah, it depends on the scene, but most of it's, yeah, hand hand digitally drawn. You know, it's all designed to be flat. So they use 3D models. So it's a mix of both, really. But because that kind of introduced this kind of collage aesthetic, where you can have 3D and 2D kind of intermixed you know, sporadically through a movie, even within scenes. But a lot of that uses 2D, you know, just kind of flat textures. And we'll learn more about that because we're going to use it as an example for half toning and for kind of these retro styling effects when we get into spot illustration. Yeah, so that's a great movie, the, the Into the Spider-Verse movie, Across the Spider-Verse. Really impressive use of, of both of these. Both of them use these techniques. All right, so let's look at the other example. Oh, and then you have the curatorial, curatorial essay that talks about the theme, right? Notice they actually don't put a lot of information on each slide, but they, when they get to the slide, this is the information they're telling us. This is kind of my old way of doing it, where I had students print it out and turn it in as a separate sheet. And you don't need to do that anymore. You just need to put the information in the slide. But this is the information necessary for each image. All right, another example. This is a theme of 3D modeling for video games, right? Not for animation. And they make it pretty simple. They put their information right with their image. And if I was working with a group, this is probably how I would do it. You create your own slides with your own examples. You just put all the information there. So then the group can decide what to take out, what to leave in, what order to do them in. And then their extras you have a, uh, a modeling portfolio of these 3D game designs. Notice these are very short videos. And then let's see, they had another extra. They brought in a polymer clay and they had all of us kind of, they did a tutorial where we all made a Kirby, you know, in 3D modeling clay to relate to how this 3D modeling can be done by hand and then 3D scanned or can be done all in the computer. It helped us understand the modeling that way. Now, this is where you're gonna post your topic and where you'll post the link for your presentation to your Google Slides. This video shows how you can create a Google Slides link that, that me and your group members can access, even if they don't have a Google account. And then this is just a list of some potential presentation topics. Remember, we're not doing the two that are demoed, the 2D <laughs> digital animation and the, the 3D video game character modeling. But you can do things like setting and background digital design, digital special effects and CGI, 3D modeling of crowds, digital painting, concept art, creature design, digital poster design, digital logo design, digital coloring for comics, typography, glitch art, motion graphics, really any digital art you find interesting. It can be advertising for food, right? As long as it's digital art, if your group can agree to it, that's a good theme. So how do you claim your theme? I've put all your groups here. So we've got blue group up here in the front. You guys are going to put your theme right here. You just reply to it. You can talk in person and then just write down your theme, or you can even have a discussion after class, you know, using this or using the course inbox if you want. Okay, gray group, we got Jonathan and Xavier. You're going to put your topic here. We got John, Raiden, and Miles. You guys are going to put your topic here. Orange group, yep, you're going to put your topic here. Purple group. I'm going to put your topic here and red group. And what's nice is we still have everyone here. So 
You should assume all of these group members are with you 